Hey guys, and thanks for joining me again. Well, I've had a few requests in the last few months to do a video on my Rickenbacker guitar, which people have spied in the background of a few other videos. And I thought this week I'd take that opportunity and show you my Rickenbacker guitar. So here it is. This actually is a signature Roger McGuinn model, and uh, it's a 37012RM. And uh, these were actually released in about 1989, and actually this one I purchased new in Melbourne. And um, it's got quite a lot of sentimental value for me, actually, because it was my 21st birthday present from my parents. And um, fortunately, my father passed away last year, so there's a lot of sentimentality in this guitar. But in this video, I thought I'd tell you five things that I know about Roger McQueen. First thing I can tell you about Roger McGuinn is his fascination with Rickenbacker guitars started after he saw George Harrison playing a 12 string Rickenbacker in the Beatles film A Hard Day's Night. And he was pretty enamored with the look of the guitar and also the sound of it. So he went out trying to find the very same model that Harrison had, but that was a fire glow with the pointy end at cutaways and he just couldn't find one. All he could find was a 360 in maple glow and that reminded him of a golden palomino horse, the colour of it, and he loved that. And according to what he says, he went home and he played it for eight hours a day, honing his style on that guitar. Originally, he was, uh, has a folk background and also a banjo playing background, so a lot of his rolling arpeggio styles have come from that. One of the signature sounds of Roger McGuinn is a very heavily compressed sound. And according to him, that actually happened quite by accident. When the birds first went into Columbia Studios back in the 60s, the studio was normally used to having classical musicians in there and they were very cautious with a rock band and added a lot of compression to the signal to protect their recording gear. Now McGuinn loved that so much, he actually asked them to put more compression on the signal and his sound was born. Now the Roger McGuinn Rickenbacker, that has an inbuilt compressor in it to give him his signature sound. So one of the other signatures to the McGuinn sound is adding a Vox treble booster to the signal and Paul Cantor from Jefferson Aeroplane was playing Rickenbackers at the same time and suggested to McGuinn that he actually use a Vox treble booster. And actually that was an outboard piece of equipment and McGuinn actually took it apart and actually installed it himself inside his 12 string Rickenbacker. So the use of compression and a treble booster gave him his signature sound. And of course the Rickenbacker signature McGuinn guitar also has a treble booster as well as the compression. So prior to 1988 and the development of his signature guitar, apparently Roger McGuinn was never truly happy with his stage sound and especially the compression. He never felt that it kind of replicated what he could do in the studio and Rickenbacker spent a lot of time developing the internal electronics on the guitar so it's active and again it's that compressor and treble booster which really gives you that signature McGuinn sound. My final point on Rickenbacker guitars is, while they're great for jingle jangle and power pop, they're also fantastic for more sound designy stuff. If you use lots of chorus and kind of delays, you can really get them sounding very orchestral. But recently too, I had Dean James, a Melbourne guitarist in, and he grabbed this guitar and actually played some funk on it. So I'm gonna leave you with that. If you've owned a Rickenbacker, own a Rickenbacker, and got some comments about them, please leave them in the comments section. I look forward to hearing them. And I look forward to seeing you on another video really soon.